It is the Frank and Friends show. Hi, I'm Frank Murphy. And I'm the friend, Kira Cup. Hello, Kira Cup. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to be here. We had so much to talk about. In fact, if you look at Tuesday's episode, it runs long because I'm trying to jam in everything I want to talk to you about before you left. And so, then when, and so as, you're finished, as we finished the episode on Tuesday, we basically decided, please come back. Yeah, and here I am. So I'm excited <laughs> to be here. Thanks. And talk about all the things that we have on the list today. Yeah, we have so many things to talk about, and that's why we do a show, because we just can't stop talking about ourselves. Um, and we have great merch at uh, frankandfriendsshow.com backslash store. So I hope that you'll support us in that way. And of course, uh, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, or smash that button for notifications. <laughs> So one of the things we talked about on Tuesday was that I was excited that I was going to meet a famous YouTube celebrity. Yes. Yeah. You even sent me um, a video that he did showing like how he films his recipe videos. And, and you were impressed. Like I was. I thought two million subscribers. I can't even fathom what that must feel like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he had a pizza making video and a cookie baking video that he was doing not to become YouTube famous, he was making them because he had uh, signed on to teach a journalism class, and he's a radio guy. So he felt that if he was going to have to teach some video production in this class, he'd better learn some video production. So he made a couple of YouTube videos about things he enjoyed, which is cooking, to teach himself video production, and they both, they, those two, blow up on the internet, and he says, you know, this doesn't happen to everybody, and he decided to make more and more of them to the point or he's making so much money from his sponsors that uh, he quit his day job, moved to Knoxville. That's amazing. So his name is Adam Ragusea, and I told him about you. Okay. <laughs> and since you watched one of his videos, I thought it was only fair. Oh, no. <laughs> Did you make him watch one of my videos, Frank? I thought it would be only fair, Kira. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let's put it this way. In one of Adam Ragusea's videos, he goes to Lakeshore Park in Knoxville, and he eats the onion grass right out of the ground. And in that video, because he's, you know, it's, it's vegetables, he's vegetarian, vegan, right? Yeah. But in that video, he's wearing a t-shirt from the Holy Land Market, one of his favorite places in town. I love that place. And I remembered that little, little Kira... Oh, gosh. <laughs> go ahead, Kira. <laughs> There's either two ways this could go. All right, let's find out. <laughs> There's. I used to make videos all the time when yep. I was in school. Yep. I made a video for the Holy Land Market in Delhi. That was one of the first commercials I ever did. And you were like, um, I'm guessing 15-ish? Younger than that, like 13 okay, probably. Okay, okay. 12 maybe. Well, I hope it's not inappropriate then that I've shared that with someone. <laughs> I know. But what, what's the other way it could go? What's the other way? <laughs> well... <laughs> There's another video I have on my old YouTube channel called um, Kira's Lawn Cutting Services. Oh, I could send yes. him that one too. He'd probably enjoy it. Well, you said he ate an onion out of the ground. In Kira's Lawn Cutting Services, I'm like cutting lawns with scissors. And I take the grass and I eat it. I do remember that one now that you mention it. Of course you do. <laughs> uh, but the one that I thought of on the spot was the, uh, the commercial that you made for Holy Land Market. Of course, that's the one. And... <laughs> How did you even find that, Frank? <laughs> um, I, well, I tried Googling Kira Cup, and it's not on your actual, your current YouTube channel. It's on a different one that you Thank must God. have had when you were a little kid. And so I couldn't find it. And then I thought, well, I'll just uh, YouTube search Holy Land Market, Knoxville, Tennessee. And there you are. I came, I saw your face. It was right there. If only I still had the passwords to that old account so I could take that down <laughs> in the well, other videos, too. <laughs> nevertheless, I, Adam Ragusea, um, I asked him to sign a Frank and Friends business card. Oh. So he put, hey, Kira, keep your vinegar leg on the right, which <laughs> is his logo at the end. It shows a, a, a chicken leg and vinegar and a right arrow because there's one of his videos where he's frying chicken. He does all of them in one batter, but the one that's been soaked in vinegar, he always has to constantly remind himself during the whole video, vinegar leg on the right, vinegar leg on the right. So that's kind of a catchphrase. Oh, okay. But then he wanted to sign another one for you. So this okay. is actually out of um, uh, Joseph Fioravanti's was directing. And you know Joseph. Yeah. He was there. Uh, and he had written his note about internet cook, yard onions, brasada, cake video, the videos that we're going to use for B-roll during the show. Well, anyway, that piece of paper became another autograph from Adam Ragusea, I don't know if you can read it in the silver, but it says, Hey, Kira, um, vegan food can be good. Uh, see my coconut chocolate tart video. 
That sounds amazing. So there you go. That's okay. from uh, Adam Argusia to you. I will go watch that video, Adam. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I have an autograph from a famous YouTuber. Two. You've got two autographs. Got both, two. Ma both made out to Kira. Woo! So check you out. Now you can go over and show one to Walter at the Holy Land and say, apologize. I mean, uh, thank him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to send Adam, I guess, a more current video because you've been making videos left and right. I have. But I, um, and some of these baffle me because I've decided that I'm not going to put the effort into TikTok or the, give them my personally identifiable information, <laughs> personally identifiable information. Um, but you're a TikTok star, I guess, right? I wouldn't say a star. Okay, well, then explain TikTok <laughs> to me because you you take I see the TikTok videos that you make because. Then you copy them over to Instagram? Yes, that's How does great. that go? So um, I'll come up with an idea for a video. And it's, I don't even like TikTok if I'm being completely honest. Yeah. Like I think it's dumb, but I am a videographer professionally. So I feel like in order to stay with the times, I need to do this. Sense. Yeah, and I have to do this in order to like learn how it's done so I can offer it to my clients. So yeah. I do dumb things like, um, well, you had one where it was you as yourself and you as a customer or a friend. And it's kind of like, well, what's it like being a professional videographer and the person didn't think of it, you playing the other person? Yeah, so like it was it was me versus me. <laughs> okay. And the other person was like me with glasses on and yeah. I was saying like, so what do you do for a living? And then like I said, well, I said, oh, I'm a videographer and a photographer. And the other person's like, oh, really? Like... Is That's that, a job? Yeah. Why don't you just borrow your mother's camera and work for free? Exactly. <laughs> but no. Yeah, I love doing stuff like that. And that, that video itself actually got quite a bit of views on on um, TikTok. Well, yeah, because it, it's an interesting way of, of saying, hey, this is an actual job. You know, there's work that goes into. And we've all made that mistake at some point in our life, whether it's, um, you know, even my daughter's, um, a lot of their wedding photos came out poorly or were lost because a friend did them exactly instead of a uh, professional that's so true and then like i get so upset sometimes like on facebook when people are asking for a professional's help for photos or video yeah and then they end up posting like hey i need a photographer but i have a budget and i'm going to negotiate their rates like i saw somebody post that the other day and i was like what so not you so then i'm not interested you go get somebody with less experience exactly yeah. it's like that's insulting there's so many things you have to pay for as in this industry well i'm on the other side of it in that um i'm often asked to show up and host things or MC things and they never want to pay for that you know the when i do work with dr bass that's the exception you know I, I do get paid for those gigs and i'm very thankful but most of the time you know it's a charity and they'll like they'll say oh we just thought that you would be want to support the cause and would like to donate your evening for the cause and i'm like well i guess i mean i, I do certainly like to support charity causes but um <laughs> When I had a full-time radio job, that can, was considered part of my job. You know, they would actually put that in my employee review. Frank went out and emceed uh, charity events for the following, and then they would literally put that in the public file and send it to the FCC to show that we are active and involved in the community. Oh. Well, I don't have that anymore, so now I'm thinking if... Um, there was one recent uh, event that I emceed, and I was very thankful to do it because that's a cause I've supported over the years both with money and with time. And I said, look, I don't have a job that would pay me, cover my expenses to be there. Um, would you, do you have any budget for an MC? No, but we can make the Frank and Friends show a sponsor of the event. I thought, oh, all right. Well, that's, that's what I, kind of, actually, I may, have, I may have suggested that and they went, oh. Uh, so the Frank and Friends logo is up there, you know, right alongside all the other sponsors and WOT and I got, Ooh mentioned so i did the imc the thing and you did it and then yeah. you feel like it was worth it well yes because it's friends of literacy and i i've yeah. you know the east tennessee writers hall of fame and i've been involved in that since frankly since i had a blog and i got into the hall of fame in the social media category which they don't do anymore but because social media has changed but i'm so technically i'm in there no one believes it but technically i'm in there as a member so i thought well i, I definitely want to support it and we were there um, and it was on a Friday night. In fact, um, I guess it was last, 
on, what was the date? April 8th? Was that a, yeah, that was a Friday, right? I don't know. So it was not that long ago. It was about a week ago. And, you know, it's Lent. Okay. So on Friday nights, on Fridays during Lent, Catholics don't eat meat. Now, there's a loophole. We're allowed to eat things that come from the sea. Hmm. So that means um, fish, shellfish. Technically, if you're in Louisiana, you can eat an alligator um, because it's, it comes from the water. I don't know what it, it's anyway. It's Ew. A, <laughs> an alligator. I, I, well, alligator meat's not that great. It's overrated. But um, we're, so we're allowed to have fish, but I can't have chicken, turkey, pork, beef, lamb, any of those type of things that have legs. You know, that's basically the rule. So I asked if there was, what was for dinner? They, they invited Jerry and me. That's another thing they did. They said, well, also in exchange for your emceeing services, we'll give your wife a free ticket. So the two of you can have a night out together. You get the dinner. And then the, the program was lovely. There was a couple of musicians, a couple of readings. It was, it was a good, very well done evening. And um, so I asked about the week before. I thought, oh, no, that's on a Friday night. I said, are you serving fish? No, it's chicken. I said, okay, well, um, they, I don't know what I'm going to do then. They said, would you like the vegetarian option? I'm like, well, I guess so. Because... You know, sometimes uh, one of the great loopholes for Catholics on Friday during Lent is we can have pizza, cheese pizza with no meat on it. <laughs> Could you have like a vegan chicken patty? Well, I guess that's technically what they gave us. I'm not sure exactly how to describe it, except it was the shape of a hamburger. Okay. And I think they called it, I thought they called it a impossible sausage or something like that. Oh, like the impossible burgers. Yeah. I think are... that's what they called it. And uh, have you had these? I have. I don't know. I don't know what meat tastes like, like real meat. So I don't know if they're close or whatever. But. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't. Uh, you know, worry about that. <laughs> 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 the um, <laughs> the weird part of it was not so much the flavor because it had enough spices in it that it wasn't hot, hot, spicy. It had enough spices in it that it would remind you of sausage. Okay. So. Already your mind is tricked into thinking, okay, this has a sausage-ish flavor to it, more from the spices than from the meat taste. But they, um, it was the texture. I, I don't know, I, I mean, I don't want another one, let's put it that way. I would, I don't, I'd rather just have a salad, um, but I don't, I don't wish to have another one. The, the texture, my wife said, they managed to somehow imitate the gristle part of meat, which is not the good part. And when I'm eating it, thinking they've somehow managed to imitate the overcooked texture of chicken. If you overcook chicken, it gets very rubbery. Oh. And there's some, uh, there's a couple of restaurants in town where I would order the chicken and my wife would order the salmon. And it's like, oh, why did I? It's a chain restaurant because the, oh, the chicken yeah. was overcooked every time. It's not like you go to Aubrey's and I love Aubrey's because it, they, they cook the chicken perfectly. I've never, 100% success rate with me at Aubrey's, but this other uh, chain restaurant, I'm like, I wish I had ordered something besides the chicken. I made a mistake. So now I'm trying to remember that. But they had that, that rubbery <laughs> texture with the gristle on this thing. And then the other weird part is because I'm the MC, I've been flagged to be served first. Oh, nice. Well. It's like your first class at the event. But I don't, I felt awkward about it because I'm sitting with one of the honorees and her family. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. So they're all, they're all sitting on that side of the table. I've put it so that my back is to the stage. I've deliberately chosen the seat that nobody would want because I'm going to be out of the chair. I'm going to be up there on the podium anyway. And this way, they'll all, you know, the honoree is across from me. should be able to have a perfect view. You know, simple. It's a normal MC stuff. You, you sit with the back to the stage, as close to the stage as you can. And um, so I'm sitting there and, and they're all hungry and they're all trying to start to eat their salads and stuff. And it, everybody sat down during the cocktail hour, you know, instead of mingling, they're all just like, we're ready. Let's feed us. Let's go. And it was supposed to be a full hour before the food came out. Oh, goodness. So, so I'm sitting there and I've got the, this yellow card that says vegetarian on the table in front of me. <laughs> and there were apparently a lot of people must have ordered it because they had a lot of those yellow cards they'd handed out on the, on the way in. And my wife and I are sitting there with the yellow card. And because I'm the MC, they bring me my food. And now I'm sitting there and my wife has no food. The rest of the table has no food. And I'm like, I'm sorry, everybody. I apologize. But I, 
I was told that I'm supposed to eat this while you watch me. Aw, <laughs> that is awkward because like yeah. the, their tummies are rumbling and grumbling while you're over there. I know. So they either could have, I, but but that was the thing. I mean, sometimes it, in the long run, you know, compared to other events where m most other events, many other events, you don't get fed at all. You know, as a photographer, you would know this. Sometimes yeah. you work a reception of some kind. They, you get nothing. You're hired help. That's true. You know. Although I've actually had an opposite experience. Like I, I don't know if it's just because I have like a friendly personality or something, but people always insist on I, me eating, and then I'm like, well, I can't eat that. Have you looked in the mirror, Kira? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's starving. Give her some food. <laughs> no, I understand. Yeah, but they were trying to be hospitable. Yeah. Yeah, they're probably also trying to fix you up with somebody at the party, I'm guessing. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does happen. <laughs> Quite often. So that was my experience uh, with the, the vegetarian meal. Um, at the, but on the, on the whole, a, a wonderful evening. And I just thought, you know, I, I can, I'm good. I'm, I'm ha I've had now, I can check that off on my having been, been there, done that box of uh, having the impossible imitation meat. So you're not going to have it again, ever again? I think there are other better alternatives. I mean, for a vegetarian meal, you know, I could have had, what, cheese? I mean, cheese you know, doesn't do great with me, uh, uh, you know, in, in the ensuing days. But, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pizza is fine. I can have, there's lots of vegetable soups I can have. Okay. You know, and it's only you know, six seven days a year that you have to worry about this oh that's nothing frank i know so well, exactly i i could have had nothing i could have had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and i would have been fine i eat this way 365 days a year for 12 or 13 years now <laughs> exactly yeah so you have, you're it's a struggle to find the food or no oh uh, it used to be and then when i became a full-on vegan it got full on vegan full-on vegan and then i will say it is weird like as a vegan to see all these companies trying to make like replicas of real meat and i'm like that just doesn't sound good to me like i'm trying to get away from that yeah yeah i guess they're trying to appeal to meat eaters to make the switch but i yes. as a meat eater i'm saying don't bother trying to make imitation meat you know i remember tofurkey was a thing for a while i have that every thanksgiving Oh, is it bad? Uh, it's okay. Like, I'll eat the whole thing by myself just because I'm not a picky eater as long as it's within what Yeah, I yeah, eat. yeah. But, like, most people don't like it. But, I mean, miso soup has tofu in it. Miso soup is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love tofu. All right. I make tofu scrambled eggs in the morning sometimes. Does that mean there's no eggs? That does, yeah. <laughs> then no they're eggs. not scrambled eggs. Well, they look like them because you put turmeric, black salt, um... So it's Bunch scrambled scrambled tofu. It is. Fried. Yeah. I would try that. I see I don't have any problem with trying that because you're not trying to make it taste like eggs, are you? I mean, it can have an eggy flavor if you use the black salt, but you don't like I'm not a picky eater and I'm a terrible cook. <laughs> so I just eat whatever I have unfortunately have in front of me. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, <laughs> I guess that's a good way to stay thin. Um, <laughs> but you know what's really thin, Kira? What? Bones, skeletons, super, that's skinny. That's, that's, that's tiny. That's as small as it gets. That's as small as it gets. And that's what we all end up as eventually is a bunch of bones. <laughs> and uh, when you go see Dr. Bill Bass speak, you can learn all about him and his books and everything he's got at bonezones.com. Don't forget the S. Dr. Bass and I have an event coming up on uh, Saturday, April 23rd at the Children's Museum of Oak Ridge, talking about the um, horrific Benton fireworks disaster. Ooh. Yeah, there was um, back in 1983, um, some fellas had a, well, they said they had a bait farm. It was disguised as a bait farm in Benton, Tennessee, and they were actually uh, whipping together illegal fireworks. And somebody made a mistake and blew up himself and mm. 10 other people. And it was horrible. Oh my gosh. So when the police got there, they're like, well, there's part of a guy. So they called in Dr. Bass and um, he and I did a TV interview to promote this, right? And the news anchors, Beth Haynes and Leslie Ackerson are asking about it. And they're like, well, what did you do? We said, well, I got a couple of refrigerated trucks and we put the torsos in one <laughs> and the legs in another. And then we had to look at each leg and say, is it a left leg or a right leg, a male leg or a female leg? based on whether they, you know, had hair or not. And so we, and that was where we started. And then we tried to match up the, 
So it's like a memory card game, but with bodies. <laughs> so we'll talk about that. It's a, you will erase some money for the Children's Museum of Oak Ridge and talk about that. Get your tickets before they're sold out. Uh, go to the link at childrensmuseumofoakridge.org and you can find out all about the, everything Dr. Bass does, all of his appearances, all his merchandise, and um, you can get the cups, you can get the hats, you can get the t-shirts, you can get the autographed books, everything at bonezones.com. Don't forget the S. Um, and I'm delighted to be able to, to hang out with Dr. Bass and work with him. He's a cool guy. Yeah, you met him, right? Uh, I brought him up to uh, our old studio in uh, Pigeon Forge one time. I probably did. My sister used to be an autopsy technician. What? So, yeah. She, um, she's held human brains in her hand before. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of weird things. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, we've all seen that on TV, though. That's not unusual, right? No, but like when it's real and when, when she first started working there, they didn't have to like change when they left. Like out of their scrubs, they could come home in their scrubs. And then one time she came home, did the laundry, and I won't say the rest. <laughs> no, go ahead. You may as well at this point. I may as well. well it got on everybody else's clothes? No, there was a, a small piece of flesh in the dryer. <laughs> so gross <laughs> yeah i'm so tempted to make the title of this episode flesh in the dryer <laughs> do it i mean she has a different job now she works in logistics <laughs> okay all right <laughs> oh my gosh well uh today is um holy thursday maundy thursday so that means that uh, easter is just just almost here you've got another beautiful uh, easter ish i do i love my easter colors yeah, I'm, I'm, this is, I don't know if I'll wear this for Easter or not. This is, I call this more my, my New York Mets colors. But um, I have a Facebook friend who works for, I think he works for the local government. Mm -hmm. And I won't specify whether it's city or county because I don't want to totally out him. Okay. But um, I think his department, you know, whatever they do, the Easter holiday affects them. Because I've worked for one company in my life where they actually gave us off as a company holiday Good Friday. That's and rare. in broadcasting, that's kind of unusual, but there's a public school um, near here, and they've got a marquee out front saying that they're closed on um, what is uh, what is tomorrow's date? I can't even I have to look it up. But you know what I mean? Um, I the uh, whatever it would be the fifteenth and eighteenth is that right? Would be the Friday Monday? Yeah, it says closed April fifteenth, April eighteenth, but no uh, explanation as to why. Okay. Because. You know, it's obviously Good Friday and Easter Monday, but it's a public school, so they can't say. In fact, um, the students down at uh, UT that we talked to on Monday night, they're also off Holy Thursday and Good Friday, but they call it a spring holiday. It, okay. Because so. it's a, a government-run school. They can't say it's a religious holiday. Oh. It's just coincidental that we're giving you a spring holiday that yeah. coincides with Passover and Easter. Right. You know, and in the Judeo-Christian tradition, it makes total sense. I mean, we used to be more honest about it and say, yeah, yeah we're, we're closed on Good Friday. <laughs> we're closed on Easter Monday. Yeah. And in the uh, D.C. area, my family and I used to go down to the White House on Easter Monday for the annual Easter egg roll. What is that? <laughs> well, the, it's a, the game of it is you, ha you basically take Easter eggs, and it goes, this goes back to, I think, the 1800s, and maybe a spoon, and you would, like, push them along the lawn and have a race. Oh, uh, or do some other thing with rolling Easter eggs and moving Easter eggs. So, like, were they real eggs? Well, when we went, they would have these souvenir wooden eggs. In fact, I'm looking around to see. I don't think, I don't know where. We have to pull them, we haven't pulled them out yet for Easter decorations. But we have some of these wooden eggs that say on it, White House Easter egg roll, and then whatever year it was that we were there. So we have some from several years in a row. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Like a fun little memory. Tradition. And they would have, yeah, local celebrities would be invited, including the DJs I worked for, would be invited to come and sit there and sign eggs if, you know, if people wanted them to sign. That's how I got in. Did you ever sign any eggs? No, I wasn't famous. I wasn't... Um, but you're the Frank Murphy. This was 1988, nine. <laughs> I, I didn't exist yet. Yeah, I was not a lot. There was not a lot of the Frank Murphy back in those days. <laughs> so, um, but... The point is, this guy on Facebook is, is griping that he can't figure out why Easter is two weeks later this year. This, this city employee here in East Tennessee, can anyone please explain to me why Easter is two weeks later this year? I'm like, two weeks later than what? And I guess he means two weeks later than last year. 
but why didn't he look at the calendar from the year before and the year before and the year before and see that Easter moves all over the place? I mean, there's almost a, I think it's a four-week window that Easter can be uh, late, as early as March 23rd, maybe, and as late as probably April 21st, 22nd, something like that. That is weird that it changes like that, but like, it has to do with like the, the moon or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Easter, the date of Easter, it, it really has to do with Passover, you know, and the Jewish calendar is, has a lot of, um, I don't know if it's 100% lunar based, but let's just say it's a lunar calendar more than a, a solar calendar. So the date of Passover and the date of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, really any Jewish holiday varies on the, our calendar from year to year because they're not on the same calendar. So I know how to calculate the date of Easter, and maybe this guy of the city, someone tried to explain it to him on the Facebook comments, but the basic gist of it is Easter falls on the first Sunday after the first full moon after March 21st. So in other words, March 21st happens, which is, they use that date arbitrarily to signify the first day of spring. You know, in the old, 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 old days, it used to be the first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox, which sometimes falls maybe, uh, you know how the vernal equinox is. It's the first, you know the weathermen talk about, it. oh, it's mm -hmm. officially spring tonight at 11.02 or tonight at midnight or whatever time. At this 11.02. Morning, whatever time it is. They have it very down to the precise second. Um, and there's a rare instance where that falls like on March 19 or not March 20th or March 22nd, whatever. There's a rare instance where that would mess things up and Easter would be in a weird way. So the church decided a thousand years ago, I don't know, uh, it's going to be the first Sunday after the first full moon after March 21st. So you have this month long range, but it also means there's always a full moon right before Easter. Oh. So the full moon is going to be on Saturday, the 16th, at 2.55 p.m., I think. P.m.? Well, you can have a full moon in the middle of the afternoon, yeah. Like the, but you mean, can't see it. Right. Well, sometimes you can see it. But the point is, the moon is at its fullest at 2.55 that afternoon. And then when you <laughs> see it that night, you'll be like, oh, that's a pretty full moon. But the, uh, so the idea is that it's always a full moon before Easter. And my wife yesterday was texting me. She says, man, just today's a crazy day at work. Is it a full moon or something? I said, well, you know, actually, <laughs> there's one coming up this week on, uh, on Saturday. But the other thing that makes me think about, do you know, you're familiar with history much, right? Abraham Lincoln was assassinated on April, I think it was April 15th, either the 14th, the night of the 14th, which would be today, I guess, and then died on the morning of the 15th. I'm pretty sure is how it works out. Mm -hmm. Well, he was shot on Good Friday. So what it means to me is that when John Wilkes Booth planned his getaway and was successful in getting away, at least for a while, for a few days, it was a bright full moon. It would have eased, made it easier for him to go riding horseback into the woods of Maryland or Virginia <laughs> trying to escape. Dun, dun, dun! Ah. So once in a while when Easter or Good Friday comes close to the anniversary of the Lincoln assassination, I'm reminded of all that. That is pretty interesting. Isn't there like some like theories about what happened or is that something else? A conspiracy theory? Yes. Well, in Lincoln's assassination, there was a legitimate conspiracy. John Wilkes Booth had a guy, bunch of guys helping him out. Uh, one of them at the same time he was shooting Lincoln. Another guy is over at the Secretary of State uh, Seward's house stabbing Stewart, Seward in the face at the same moment. Um, but Seward survived. Um, and then there were a few others who were all convicted and hung as part of the conspiracy. But yeah. Wow, that's intense. <laughs> yeah. So it's a solved conspiracy, if you will. Okay. Right? Everyone's, we're pretty sure that, you know, in fact, if, if anything, they're saying, well, maybe they didn't need to hang the lady who was the, the landlady. <laughs> <laughs> Poor lady. Yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe she was, but whatever. That's, this is, you know, 1865. They, yeah. they, wanted, um, they wanted to get everybody. I'm thankful that we have like video surveillance now so that we can almost prove just about anything. Like if somebody comes and takes something from your house, most people have those doorbell cameras. Do you have one? I do. I don't. You don't? Why? I, because uh, I'm cheap. <laughs> They're not that expensive. You can get an off-brand one. <laughs> it just also repels bugs? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's off-brand. Off I, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> what do, I mean, what do you do with the footage? Do you ever make a, a funny video out of it? 
Because I've seen these all the time where people say, oh, look, there's a raccoon in my porch. Or, oh, look, the, uh, you, I, I've, I made the UPS man tap dance to get a treat, which I think is offensive, by the way. I mean, it's kind of, leave the UPS guys alone. I know. People like to mess with him. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't either. Like, I don't think we've ever recorded anything from it, but my sister has. Um, like, her getting home late at night, and, like, I think her um, her fiancé had driven her home one night, and she was just so tired. She sent us the footage of her, like, walking back in the house, and, like, she's... Just like falling over, ran into the car. <laughs> she may not have actually been tired. Did you save it? <laughs> she, not with me, but she has it. No, you should. I mean, I don't need to see it, but I'm saying you need to save it for the wedding. The oh, wedding that's reception. That's a good idea. <laughs> that's true. I do have some plans for her wedding reception. Like, I mean, we're talking like a bachelorette party plans. Or are we talking? No, like the day of, like. I don't think she'll actually watch this episode, so maybe I could <laughs> I could say it here. <laughs> I'd love it, but whatever. Okay, hopefully she does it here. So my plan is to do a surprise video for her. Okay. For instead of doing a speech, I want to get up. Best, uh, best lady, what are you? Maid of honor. That's it. She hasn't officially asked me, but I am. Duh. I'm her sister. Yeah, who else is going to be? Exactly. So, <laughs> so I'm going to get up there like I'm going to give my speech. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to say, like, play the video, and they're going to play the video, and then I'm going to do, like, a reenactment of how she and her fiancé met. Nice. And then do this whole, like, film. Good. And make it cool. Hopefully it turns out Fantastic. good. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course it will. You're uh, very good at it. Well, thanks. <laughs> in fact, if you do ever want to um, hire Kira as your videographer, you go to nothingrhymeswitharange.net. Um, thanks. Can you stick around for another episode? We'd love to talk to you a little more. Yeah, sure. Okay, good. Um, meanwhile, if you are a fan of any kind of audio entertainment, uh, podcasts or audio books or things that you can listen to in your car, in your house, in your earbuds, when you go to bed, when you're mowing the lawn, all sorts of wonderful things you can do at Audible. And when you use our code, audibletrial.com backslash show, uh, you're helping support our show and you get a free 30-day trial where you can test the waters at Audible and you get a credit to download one free thing that you keep forever, an MP3 that you download onto your device and that's one that you just keep period the end whereas um, you get continue to get credits as you're a member and you could continue to download things if you wanted or you know stream without downloading there's all sorts of things you can do with audible and think about just tens of thousands of titles whatever book it is you've been meaning to read and for me I've there's a list of books I've been meaning to read but you think I can't read I'm driving or I can't read I'm laying in bed and my eyes are tired boom audiobooks I agree. And I think it's such a better thing to do than just listening to music. Because, like, if you drive a lot yeah. and you listen to music, think about that time that you could be spending learning something new. Like learning a new topic, learning about dead bodies from Dr. Bass Ooh. or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, you can actually listen to this podcast. If you learn something on this podcast today, you can find this podcast on Audible. Did you know that? I did not know that. Well, now you know. <laughs> One of the many things at audibletrial.com slash show. So uh, we'll wrap up with a plug for the merchandise. I hope that you'll go consider buying some of our Frank and Friends show stuff as Kira delicately balances one. I, I paid for those mugs, Kira. Be careful. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> All right. Well, you just stay like that to the end of the episode. And I'll talk as slowly as I can so as I don't um, startle you. Because okay. there's water in it, right? I am Kira Cup. <laughs> <laughs> frankandfriendshow.com slash store. Uh, thank you to Catherine Frady for updating the website, even though she's working in Gulf Shore, Florida, directing and covering Tosca down there with Gulf Shore Opera. So I appreciate you, Catherine, for, uh, for what you're doing. Um, she'll be back at the beginning of May, I think. All right. Well, that is the Frank and Friends show. Thank you so much for watching, listening, sharing, subscribing. I'm trying to stretch this out as long as possible. Can I you know. tell? <laughs> I'm Frank I Murphy. And I'm Kira Cup. <laughs> and we'll talk to you again next time. <laughs> you just you're just gonna leave me. Oh no. <laughs>